Hello and welcome again in the series of fluid mechanics discussion. So in this uh, in this discussion, uh, we will be talking about the uh, the concept of the pressure of the fluid and the fluid statics uh, analysis. Okay. So pressure mathematically is defined as force per unit area, right? So uh, just let me give some heading about the about the concept of concept of pressure okay so pressure is nothing but the force per unit area and that is only the mathematical definition okay so how the pressure force actually generates because uh, just see the thing it is pressure okay Pr uh, pressure and stress both are having the same uh, unit of newton per meter square in si and that is equivalent to force per unit area right but mainly this word is mainly used for solids okay and and it is mainly for fluids of course in case of fluids also we use the term stress and i will relate this stress and the concept of pressure for a particular fluid later okay so first of all how the pressure for a fluid originates uh, let us take a container okay let us take a container and we have a particular fluid in this container we have a particular fluid in this container so in case of solid fluids uh, what is the main difference the intermolecular force of attraction okay so in case of fluids that uh, that is liquids and gases the molecules are uh, relatively less bounded because of the intermolecular uh, forces than they are in the solid right so the motion of the molecules are more free in fluids and in case of fluids if we compare between liquids and gases then the force sorry the motion is higher in gases because gases in gases the molecules are having the least amount of um, intermolecular force right so uh, what happens is if we take a second case the container of same volume okay so both of this container is having the volume v cut okay but in this in this container i have a fluid right and in this container i have a solid okay i have a solid in this container i have a solid okay so if i consider now the molecule of a solid that is mainly fixed the only motion this solid molecules can perform are vibratory motion okay vibratory motion it can be a linear vibratory motion like this or it can be a rotational vibratory motion like this okay but it cannot move permanently from one place to another unless otherwise a force is applied on the solid but in case of the fluid in case of the fluid if i consider a fluid molecule here so this molecule is having the tendency of moving 
here and there okay uh, here or here or here and similarly all other molecules of the fluid are having the same tendency so they can move randomly okay they can move randomly okay and because of that let us say that now i am just focusing on a particular wall of this container uh, let us say that this wall okay let us say that is wall okay so i am exaggerating sorry so i am exaggerating this wall right here okay so this is the wall okay this is the wall in this side i have the fluid right i have the fluid so just consider any one fluid molecule so at a particular moment at a particular moment this molecule will hit this wall okay and after hitting this wall after hitting this wall this molecule uh, will be bounced back okay uh, for the time being let us forget about the the collision being non uh, inelastic or or uh, elastic okay so this molecule uh, will hit here and let us say that uh, it will uh, rebound at any other velocity after uh, hitting so the hitting uh, velocity is vh and the rebound velocity is vr okay and the mass of the particle or the fluid molecule is m so now because of this because of this phenomena i have the change in linear momentum so p is okay linear momentum okay p is linear momentum so change in linear momentum is final momentum minus initial momentum that is this right and let us say that this is uh, so this is uh, happening in a very small time interval that is del t that means a force is exerted exerted on the wall and that is equal to change in momentum by change in time fine change in momentum and change in time okay so similarly uh, similarly at this point only at this point only there are thousands and billions of molecule uh, making collisions from here from here from here okay so all those momentum changes are can be averaged can be statistically averaged and uh, we can find a time averaged force okay time averaged and molecular uh, averaged that is uh, averaged over all the molecular motions we can find a particular force so we have seen a similar kind of approach in finding the pressure of uh, in mainly kinetic theory of gases in our 10 plus 2 level okay so in this whole wall in this whole wall there are various molecules okay making collisions like this maybe like this okay maybe like this 
okay and they are rebounding okay so, and because of that uh, because of all those collisions a force is, is exerted on the wall and and that force is only the origin of of pressure okay so now let us say at any point in the fluid at any point in the container at any point in the container like this point or this point so at this point also if i have to measure the pressure then maybe i will insert a pressure probe right i will insert a pressure probe like this so in this pressure probe also thousands of molecule uh, will be making collisions so at that particular point because of those collisions because of those collisions the pressure will be exerted okay and also if now i consider that uh, we all know that uh, it is a law of hydrostatics and i will prove it mathematically that with the depth the pressure actually increases so as i am increasing the depth there are collisions and there are also the effect of the weight of the molecules that are above the current molecules and what i am trying to say is if i have a molecule here and if i have a molecule in similar levels so they are uh, making collisions with each other uh, affecting the value of the pressure but this molecule here this molecule here here and here all these molecules are having a particular weight and that effect of the weight and thusly the effect of the collision that, that is taking place in this upper region will also be affecting in this lower region so mainly because of the uh, weight of this of this upper region the pressure actually increases okay so origin of pressure if if someone says that uh, what is the origin of pressure so that is nothing but molecular collisions okay molecular collisions in fluid okay now let us go to another concept all these are fluid properties okay so this is not a fluid property that is i am saying partial pressure i think you have learnt about this partial pressure previously okay so again let us consider a, a container and now in this container we have various gases uh, one gas is denoted by this blue molecules one gas is denoted by this red molecules okay and one gas uh, may be denoted by this white molecules right so this is a mixture of gas so, so this is the mixture of gas okay so let us say that this is the gas one fine and this is the gas 2 and this is gas 3 okay so the in any point or let us say neglecting the effect of the uh, height or the hydrostatic pressure this height okay so let us say at any point at any point or the 
vector say so let me write in another color because blue is indicating this gas 2 so let me write in this color okay okay so at any so let me say that total pressure okay pt so this is equals to total pressure in the tank in the tank okay so partial pressure is nothing but that how much pressure is exerted because of the gas one so partial pressure is the amount of pressure exerted sorry exerted by a particular component of a fluid mixture okay so we have see all seen the dalton's law and that says that this pt is equals to p of 1 plus p of 2 plus p of 3 so this is the partial pressure okay of gas 1 and this is the partial pressure of gas 2 and, and likewise this is partial pressure of gas 3. So this is the concept of partial pressure that and from the point of view of molecular collisions that out of all the collisions making by the molecules red blue and white molecules out of all the um, collisions uh, how much collisions are made by these white molecules that is contributing for p1 how much collisions is made by this blue molecule these blue molecules and and that is and that is contributing for the value of p2 how much collisions is contributing for this is contributed for this red molecules and that is affecting the value of p3 okay so this is the concept of partial pressure and finally a very important fluid property that is a very important fluid property that is vapor pressure that is vapor pressure okay so uh, what is uh, vapor pressure so we all know that a fluid a fluid is having can have two types of phases one is liquid another is gas or vapor another is gas or vapor phase okay and what is the main di uh, difference that is for a liquid the intermolecular force is greater and for gases the intermolecular force are lesser right so if i try to draw the schematic of the molecular structure so again let us have a tank okay okay so again now the tank is not totally filled by a fluid but the uh, upper surface of the fluid is denoted by this line okay so this is the fluid fine okay now so these fluids are having the molecules like this okay so these molecules are maintaining sufficient amount of cohesive forces compared to the vapor phase 
so any matter can have its solid phase can have its can have its liquid phase can have its vapor phase so this is the liquid phase okay of a of let us say fluid a okay now there may be some case that at this position at the at just the junction of the liquid and this air or uh, uh, or this air let us say that uh, at the uh, uh, initial phase i have only air okay i have only air i have only air so this is nothing but the air okay so at this junction of this uh, fluid and air i have this molecule okay i have this molecule so this molecule is having the is having the uh, the um, cohesive forces because of this molecule and this molecule right i am exaggerating this so all these molecules are exerting the cohesive forces right now at a particular uh, uh, instant maybe the case is that the cohesive forces have become a bit lesser and because of this uh, and because of that this molecule is having a tendency to leave this liquid surface okay so this molecule is leaving now this molecule has left and likewise from all over the or from all over the surface because of the same reason the molecules are leaving okay so now along along with the liquid phase i also have the vapor phase of the fluid okay so these molecules are representing the vapor phase okay vapor phase of the fluid right okay so this is representing the vapor phase of the fluid and these are in uh, equilibrium and what do we mean by uh, uh, equilibrium that is uh, there is no more change in the concentration of this vapor phase and this and this liquid phase okay that is no more change in, in specific volume or density or anything so that is called a, a equilibrium and in our daily life in our life we stay in equilibrium uh, uh, when we are not disturbed by anything that is maybe you are doing your own work okay and you are not having any disturbance so that is your uh, equilibrium condition okay but for matters for for actually the matters this kind of uh, materials the conditions of this of this change of equilibrium are limited that is if i change some other properties like the pressure the volume the temperature then only the the equilibrium can get disturbed likewise if you are doing a particular work and you are in your own equilibrium then also there are some affecting factors that can disturb uh, your uh, equilibrium but for the particles or for the materials these uh, changing conditions or the disturbing or the disturbing conditions are very limited but for us there are various options to get distracted and to to spoil our equilibrium right so that is the main difference between us and the uh, particles okay so that is the concept of equilibrium okay so this vapor phase at this condition is in equilibrium okay equilibrium the concept of equilibrium that we will study in thermodynamics in more details okay is in uh, equilibrium with the liquid phase with the liquid phase and vice versa the liquid phase is also in in equilibrium with the vapor phase fine okay
so and now uh, then what is the vapor uh, pressure so this vapor pressure okay this vapor pressure okay is the pressure okay pressure exerted by the vapor phase of a particular liquid vapor phase of a particular material I should say material that is in equilibrium okay equilibrium I am writing in short with its liquid phase is known as vapor pressure of that liquid of that liquid or fluid I should say fluid here okay of that fluid okay so this is the vapor pressure that is at this equilibrium condition okay the pressure exerted by these blue molecules so I have here the air molecules also okay so in this region in this region I have a mixture of air plus vapor molecules okay vapor of fluid A fluid A because this is the fluid A okay so and now uh, then what will be the value of the vapor pressure so let us say that in this upper zone the total the total pressure is again pt and that is equals to partial pressure of air plus partial pressure of this vapor phase okay so then this partial uh, pressure is nothing but the vapor pressure okay okay now another topic and uh, this is now this topic I will tell you is nothing but the effect of temperature okay effect of temperature on vapor pressure okay so we have seen that the vapor pressure is generated because of the molecules are coming out from the liquid until just mind this sentence the molecules are coming out from the liquid surface until there is an equilibrium established an equilibrium means no more molecules can come out from the liquid or even if a particular molecule is coming out from the liquid then to maintain the number of molecules the uh, uh, one particular molecule has to go back to the liquid okay am I clear I am just just uh, repeating the statement the vapor pressure the vapor pressure in equilibrium is constant and the vapor pressure is dependent on the number of molecules in vapor phase so if so in the vapor phase as the number of molecule has to be constant so in equilibrium is any if any molecule from the liquid surface is coming out in the vapor phase then a molecule from the uh, from the vapor phase ha has to be go back has to go back in the in the liquid phase to maintain the same amount of uh, pressure and that is the concept of equilibrium okay so this vapor pressure is because of these molecules okay so in nature there is a phenomena okay that uh, you can see okay is uh, at a particular temperature t okay so is in all this case uh, for this tank 
I did not have mentioned uh, one very uh, important thing and that is all this thing this vapor pressure is is defined at a particular particular temperature T ok. I think uh, it is clear. So, how many molecules uh, will come out of the liquid that will depend on this the temperature T ok. So, this T can answer that how many molecules will be in vapor phase vapor phase and that and that directly affect what will be the vapor pressure that is very intuitively as the temperature is increasing the motion or the kinetic energy of the molecules are uh, increasing right and that is why to go out of this to go out of this liquid surface the tendency of going out from this liquid surface is more as I am uh, as I am increasing the temperature because of increment in energy ok. So, that directly affects the vapor pressure ok. So, that means at a particular temperature there is a particular vapor pressure ok and actually what is happening. So, at this particular temperature molecules are going to the vapor phase and at the same time to, uh, to maintain the uh, same number of molecules one molecules uh, has to come down. So, there is a uh, constant interchange between the phases vapor and liquid ok. So, there is a phase change phenomena a phase change is happening is happening ok at temperature T at temperature T and at this temperature T the vapor pressure is fixed because the number of molecules in vapor phase are fixed ok ok. So, in the thermodynamic tables if, if uh, I do not know that you have studied or not there is a term called there is a term called saturation pressure and sorry sorry and saturation temperature ok. So, for and these terms are applicable for either the phase change process ok phase change. So, this saturation temperature and the saturation pressure are dependent that is for a particular saturation temperature you can have only one value of saturation pressure ok. So, there is a there is an uh, one to one correspondence between this saturation pressure and the saturation temperature. So, this saturation pressure is nothing but this vapor pressure this vapor pressure at a particular temperature. So, if I mention this particular vapor pressure and I and I am saying I am claiming that this is in equilibrium with its liquid phase then then the temperature is automatically gets fixed and that is called the saturation temperature and and vice versa if I mention the temperature and I and I uh, ensure that these two phases are in equilibrium then the saturation then the vapor pressure is fixed and that is called the saturation pressure ok. So, this is called the vapor pressure and I 
and this was the effect of T on vapor pressure. Okay. So now, and let me answer a last question about this vapor pressure. That is, the the actually the most important question. Why at all this VP is important in fluid mechanics? Okay. So just think that. If so, if the pressure is a bit lesser, okay, that is at a particular temperature, let us say that a particular temperature 20 degree Celsius, uh, here the pressure is maintained a bit lesser, a bit lesser. Here the pressure is maintained a bit lesser, okay. So, I have said that at this particular pressure only at this particular pressure only the equilibrium between the solid and the uh, sorry the fluid and the, the liquid and the gas is established and the phase change and the phase change process can take place by this by this phenomenon okay okay so if in the liquid so now if in any system, if let us consider another system, let us consider an another system. Okay, sorry. Another system, and in this system, I have, I have this system filled with fluid. Okay. Now let us say that. At 20 degree Celsius, at 20 degree Celsius, I have this fluid, fluid B, let us say. Okay. And I know that the saturation pressure, that P saturation, okay, or let us say that the vapor pressure is, a, is equal to, uh, let us say, just take any value, um, 1 atm, okay, or let us say that. Mm. 1 kPa okay uh, because believe me the value of the uh, vapor pressures are actually very low okay so uh, let us say that uh, it is 1 kPa so if I am able to maintain this this uh, pressure uh, pressure inside the tank let us say uh, it is pt and equals to 0.7 kpa okay so then this pressure inside the tank is, is less than this p, p saturation and is equals to the vapor pressure so i have mentioned that only this amount of pressure only at the saturation pressure only at this uh, vapor pressure the phase change process can take place okay at this temperature at this temperature only i am talking about at this temperature only okay so as the as the pressure okay is now lesser okay so there can be actually two cases okay so first let us consider uh, 1.2 kp okay 1.2 kp this case 1 and his case 2 okay and his case 2 so uh, whenever this pressure is more okay this pressure is more all over the fluid this pressure is more that is like if I am if I am uh, able to maintain this pressure that is uh, greater than the vapor pressure. This pressure is greater than the vapor pressure. But actually, this can't happen, right? So if this, so if this is more than the vapor, uh, more than the vapor pressure, 
in this upper region then at this particular temperature to maintain the vapor pressure some molecules has to go down then there will be a phase change process but only in one direction to maintain the vapor pressure am i clear and if this pressure is lesser is is, is lesser than the vapor pressure then some molecules has to come up then there is also a phase change but in in one direction that is from liquid to vapor so if the if this pressure in the tank is more than the vapor pressure then a uh, deliberate phase change from the liquid to gas will occur and if the pressure is less than the vapor pressure deliberate phase change from uh, sorry 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 if the pressure is more than the vapor pressure okay so to maintain the same amount of vapor of vapor pressure because i have told that at a particular temperature the the vapor pressure cannot exceed a particular value and and that is called the saturation pressure so if the vapor pressure if the tank pressure is more than that saturation pressure or vapor pressure then to make down that pressure some molecules has to go back and then a phase change from the gas phase to liquid phase has to occur and if the tank pressure is less than the vapor pressure then to make that pressure go up some molecules has to go go from the liquid phase to the gas phase so then a delivered phase change from the liquid phase to the gas phase has to occur same concept i will apply here so so uh, uh, for this first case if the pt is 1.2 kPa that is greater than the vapor pressure then uh, then uh, mm, then the case should be what then if there then if there have been a vapor there had been a vapor then that vapor should have been changed to the liquid phase but but uh, here i don't have any vapor phase all this is liquid phase okay so there is no question of phase change from the vapor to the liquid right so that directly means if the pressure is greater than the vapor pressure then this liquid here uh, will will remain in liquid phase in liquid phase but if this is case 2 if this is case 2 that is the tank pressure is less than the vapor pressure okay so to make the vapor to so to make the uh, pressure up this tank paper is less than the vapor pressure so to make the pressure up liquid to gas liquid to gas this phase change has to occur okay so then there will be some liquid molecules and sorry there will be some vapor phase and that vapor phase will will create some bubbles some bubbles so inside these bubbles i have this vapor phase and outside this i have this liquid phase so now i have some bubbles so if this part is a part of a pipe part of pipe so then the then the uh, water has to flow so let us say that the water is flowing in this direction then from this pressure zone uh, uh, whenever this water will move to this zone then this bubble will uh, the, then these bubbles will also move and because of that after changing their pressure zones there may be a, a high pressure zone and that high pressure zone uh, will make this bubble collapse will make this bubble uh, collapse so as these bubbles are collapsing so there are some void creation there are some void creation so to fill up that so to fill up that void the the liquids will rush through the liquids will rush through those voids okay 
in high velocity. So, the liquids will very high velocity they will rush through. Okay. So, because of that there will be a very high rate of corrosion, there will be very high rate of corrosion. So, because of that high corrosion, high corrosion, okay, high corrosion. So, and that we do not want. So, at the point uh, when this Pt is more than the vapor pressure, then I have all over liquid, all over liquid and that is fine, that is fine. And when this happens, let us say that due to any cause, the pressure inside the pipe or any system that we are concerned about, the pressure falls to the vapor pressure. So, then bubble formation, okay, bubble formation, bubble form, bubble formation takes place, okay, fine, bubble formation takes place, fine and because of that there is a chance of corrosion. Okay. And this phenomena, this phenomena that is if the pressure is go down or is or is equal to the vapor pressure, then the bubble formation takes place. This phenomena is called cavitation. Okay, because of which this corrosion occurs that we do not want and to prevent the corrosion, to prevent the corrosion that is cavitation, to prevent the cavitation system pressure, system pressure that is pressure anywhere of the, of the system should be greater than the vapor pressure. So, that is why the vapor pressure is very important for the fluid mechanics consideration, okay, okay. So, now the last concept about the pressure that is direction of pressure, okay. So, just think of the fact that if I am considering a particular wall actually, okay. Sorry, if I am considering a particular uh, wall like this, so then the fluid molecules are making the collisions like that, okay. All the molecules are making the collisions like that, and if a molecule is also making a collision like that also, then the force exerted by the molecules on the wall can have only one direction and that is uh, at this point it is this, at this point that is this, this point it is this. So, because of the collision can the direction of the force on the wall can be this. No, right, and also can the direction of the force of, uh, on the wall uh, can be some this that is uh, inclined? No, right, because uh, uh, even if this molecule uh, is making an oblique collision of a theta, but only this component of the momentum change only this component of the momentum change uh, will contribute for the force. This theory is taught in uh, uh, in engineering mechanics in collisions. Okay. So, that is why I always say that all the subjects of mechanical engineering are related. Uh, uh, we are studying the mechanics only, but this is the mechanics for the fluids. Okay. So, that means the direction of the force has to be has to be compressive that is inverse for the surface and it has to be perpendicular. 
so this, this direction has to be comp compressive and perpendicular to the surface so here uh, uh, one thing is that is i should say pressure force because pressure is a scalar and in any and in any direction it has the same magnitude okay okay so direction of a pressure force of pressure force on a surface i should say like this because at any point i could think of pressure okay at any point i could think of pressure that is if in this container at this point i have to think about pressure then in all the in all the uh, direction in this 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 in all the direction i have the same i have the same magnitude of the pressure okay i have the same magnitude of the pressure fine okay so we have completed everything about the concept of pressure now let us study something very important and that is called fluid statics fluid statics okay so one word is fluid that, that we have defined in our first discussion next word is static static means velocity is zero or no movement So we have to analyze the fluid elements or the fluid analyze means uh, everything. So the velocity is zero, then uh, then uh, then we don't have to go for the velocity, right? And also acceleration is zero. Okay. So we have to study. We have to firstly develop a governing equation for the statics. So first of all. Uh, what do we mean by a governing equation okay so by by governing equation okay so uh, let me give the heading of governing equation of fluid statics fluid statics statics okay so first of all what do we mean by governing again equation so this is equation containing all the relevant terms of the concerned system okay so for a fluid for a fluid system for a fluid system the relevant terms are actually for all the uh, systems not only fluid the position the velocity the acceleration the forces the torques this okay so the the equation that can be applied here okay that is f equal to m the newton second law because let's see all torque equals to i alpha both the equations are having the same meaning because the c from a uh, we can have x x dot and a itself is x double dot and this f is the dynamic part so both the dynamic and the kinematic parts are here so if we have to measure the velocity then we can uh, get the analytical solution from these equations uh, similarly from here we can get theta theta dot theta howl dot uh, etc okay so that is for de for deriving the governing equation we have to apply this f equal to ma right then let us apply okay so 
firstly let us consider a fluid element okay let us consider a fluid element uh, let me draw it with a blue color to represent the fluid okay okay so this is an cubical fluid element okay and sorry and let us now draw the coordinate axis okay so this is let us say the x axis and this is let us say the y and this is z okay and this is let us say just this is z. okay fine and this length and this length and this length and another is let us say this one okay this that is the dimensions of the fluid element okay so this is nothing but dx this is nothing but dy okay uh, okay, so this is like a, a vertical. So, uh, so let me give this axis as z and this is as y. So, then this is dy and this is dz. Okay, done. So, this is an fluid element. Okay, fluid element. cubical okay and all this these are ending to zero fine okay so on this fluid element also on this fluid elements also there will be uh, pressure there will be pressure forces so obviously consider no fluid motion because of fluid statics okay this is in static condition no fluid motions okay so let us draw the pressure forces now so this will be the pressure force on this face okay and I have said that on every surface the, the pressure force will be compressive that is inwards and perpendicular. So, this will be the pressure force on this surface. So, let me draw it again. So, this will be the pressure force on this surface. Okay. So, these are uh, for the surfaces. So, let me name this A, B, C, D, E f g h so i have drawn for the g a d h and f b c okay so let us now draw the pressure forces for the okay so uh, first let me give the values so here let us say that the pressure force is p okay because as it is an infinitesimally small element so, at all the direction, the magnitudes of the pressure forces are same at the same point. Okay. So, this is P. Okay. So, at the similar surfaces, right, or uh, the surfaces attached to this origin, all those surfaces uh, will have the same magnitude 
of force okay so this p okay this p and here the pressure will be p plus let us say that del p or dp now this p here is only the function of this space coordinate because there is no time coordinate and we are considering this x direction variation so that is why this dp is from the partial derivative calculus this into dx fine okay so now let us consider the vertical component of force and uh, let us draw like this so just let me remove this dx and um, so this is nothing but the dx okay okay so now let me draw this vertical component and that is this this and this so on the vertical surfaces so this is p this is p and so this force is p plus del p del z into dz right and similarly for the y direction <coughs> for the y direction okay the the direction of force on the surface a b c d is like uh, sorry not like this because the, the direction will be changed and so this will be like this okay <coughs> and on the surface g f e h g f e h i have the force like this I have the force like this right so this value of the force will be this value is uh, p and this is p plus del p del y into dy okay so now it is fine okay so these are the values of the pressure and to have the force i have to multiply the area so for this y direction this area is for for the phase a b c d for the phase a b c d this area is this dx into dz so dx dz this is also the same dx dz for this x direction this will be this dy into dz right because of the phase g a d h uh, this is and this will be also p into dy into dz right and for the vertical direction the phase will be a b f g a b f g okay so so the area is dx dy and here also the area is dx dy right okay So now let us write the equilibrium equation. So as they are in static condition, right? So then from this I can write summation of Fx, summation of all the forces, all the external forces acting along x is equal to m ax, and ax is uh, is equal to zero. Similarly, summation along m if m y is equal to zero, and because all that in all the uh, directions, the there is no acceleration. So let me write in x direction for equation one, equation two, and equation three. So for uh, equation one. I have so is there any force acting in x direction I think no because only force here I am considering or we will consider is the gravity force okay only force that that we should consider is 
the gravity force acting in this direction. So, only force is this gravity force is G. G, okay, that is minus G K cap, okay. So, this is the direction of gravity force. So, let us come to the equation. So, here summation of uh, Fx is 0, okay. Summation of Fx. So, there is no acceleration and that is 0 and summation of Fx is what? Only forces are acting in x direction are because of this pressure forces. No other external uh, no other external forces are there. Okay, so uh, so this will be dz minus p plus dp dx into sorry into dx into dy dz. So that is zero, and that directly means dp dx into dx dy dz that is equal to 0 and dx dy dz both are uh, tending to 0 but not equal to 0 that directly means there is no pressure variation in x direction that means pressure is not a function of x okay fine so just see here because of this gravity term we only have this az okay az that is equals to minus g k cap and i have written all those all these uh, equations not considering the the gravity term so after considering this gravity i have to write here minus g k cap into this acceleration into mass dm into mass dm the the infinite decimal mass okay now let us consider the equation 2. So, equation 2 is this Fy. So, considering summation of Fy and that is equals to just because of the pressure force, no other forces are there. So, P dx dz minus P plus dp dy dy again dx dz equal to 0 that directly means that directly means del p del y into dx dy dz and that is equal to 0 and because this is not equal to 0 that directly means that pressure is also not a function of y because del p del y is 0. Now, let us come to the third equation, okay. that is this is equal to again. Now, uh, we can write actually directly that for the x for the x direction, I have del p del x into dx dy dz. For the y direction, I have del p del y into dx sorry into dx dy dz. So, similarly uh, you can do the whole math by yourself, but it will come as del p del z into dx dy dz, but that is not equal to 0 that is equals to minus ok minus g ok minus g into dm because I have considered this positive direction in upwards that, that is in positive k cap. So, th and that is why this is plus and this is minus uh, ok and this is minus. and this is minus ok. So, this is dm and what do we mean by dm? So, that is rho density of the fluid 
into dv in finitesimal volume and that is nothing but dx dy dz okay so that so that's why the equation becomes and that is equal to okay rho into dx dy dz so that means and because this dx dy dz are not equal to 0 these are the certain mathematical concepts that that you cannot ignore in exams in your semester exam so i have derived all this very carefully the same steps you have to follow in your semester exams also so there was a g uh, with a minus sign so the equation becomes dp dz equal to minus rho g just observe very carefully here that i have written the this d not this thing so because i have i have proven that this p is not a function of x and not a function of uh, y so there is no meaning of writing this partial derivative so so this is directly uh, equal to this okay so then the equation becomes sorry sorry um, just very sorry so then the equation becomes dp dz equal to minus rho g so this is the governing uh, governing equation of fluid statics considering only the gravity okay okay so now there can be various options there can be various options so the first option is okay the first option is this rho is constant but in actual case this rho is a function of temperature and pressure okay temperature and pressure so we are uh, considering the 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 variation of pressure here so we will only consider the variation of temperature okay so if the rho is constant then directly p is uh, p is equals to minus rho g integral this and that is equal to some so minus rho g z plus some p naught okay so as you go down that means this minus z actually uh, increases so that is why the magnitude of p increases okay and that is why we just write uh, in this form because uh, so so uh, whenever you are writing in this form then uh, uh, you should be uh, careful that you are considering downward to be your positive direction okay and if rho is again a function of temperature so then uh, so then uh, we can write rho in various forms okay so let us say that for an iso that for an isothermal condition the temperature is not changing and that is why the rho is also not changing okay so we can have various uh, functions of rho and and one function is this okay this t into k okay and this k is called the lapse rate the rate at which the density is changing because of the temperature change and just just forgive me the rho should actually decrease as we increase the temperature okay okay and this t if we consider our ideal gas e uh, equation then rho rt that is equals to p so just replace this t by p by 
R row. Okay. 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 So then our equation becomes del P del Z equal so D P D Z uh, equal to minus rho not into 1 minus T into K into G. Right. Okay. 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 So, so, uh, so this is the function of temperature by I, but I have to find the uh, pressure as a function of Z. So, we know that as we can uh, increase the height, as we go up the atmosphere, the temperature actually decreases. So, the temperature is temperature is this. So, as we are so temperature is is related by this by from height ok. So, by applying this two equation. So, just uh, forgive me because this is not the lapse rate. So, we can have the uh, variation of temperature mm -hmm. with the row, but that is given by that is given by not this equation, but this ideal gas equation considering ideal gas equation. Obviously, if the gas is not considered to be ideal, then we can have various uh, various uh, row variations with temperature. Okay, so that was my mistake. Okay, just just forgive me that was a silly mistake because uh, I have uh, I have teaching uh, all these basic things after a lot of time okay so that is why these small mistakes are happening because I am not revising uh, anything okay but just because I have learned this thing in very deep so that is why I am able to uh, teach you okay so now combining these two equation uh, so then they say uh, then this equation is not also there so then it is minus rho g and rho is a, and rho is equal to p by rt p by rt g minus p by rt g so these equations actually okay so this equation and this equation and this equation combining these three actually we are getting that dp dz equal to minus p by rt minus p by rt into g and this t is now i can i can replace by this alpha z into g right so then this dp by p comes here so let us take the minus sign here and this becomes g by r t naught dz by 1 minus alpha z so now if i integrate it from p naught a reference pressure to p and from z naught to z then uh, it becomes minus ln p by p naught and this becomes g by r t naught ln 1 minus alpha z by 1 minus alpha z naught and by minus alpha will be there so this minus and minus cancels out then the expression becomes this 1 minus alpha z 1 plus uh, yeah 1 minus alpha z naught g by r t naught into alpha so this will be the variation of pressure uh, with respect to z the height so my whole objective of solving this problem is not like that uh, you don't have to memorize this okay you don't have to memorize this but in gate or any exam okay maybe the case is that uh, uh, 
uh, you can be asked okay this type of questions that i have this rho as a function of temperature given t as a function of height given then i have to find this p as a function of height for the fluid statics uh, okay that is no fluid motion is there and if this is not given then consider then consider ideal gas okay then consider ideal gas okay so up till i hope this is fine right so then uh, just go through all these things okay and just make all the all the concepts clear because in semester in semester examinations also you may be asked to derive this governing uh, this governing uh, equation of fluid statics and then you have to do all this thing step by step okay so for today uh, let us uh, so let us call it a day and just take care and obviously uh, just comment just comment uh, anything that you feel that i should uh, improve or add or subtract uh, anything from this series and if you and uh, and uh, uh, if you want then subscribe to know that uh, if i am some if i am uh, uploading some video or not okay but that is not mandatory but please make sure to share this thing to a friend who is uh, uh, i mean who needs this okay so that's all for today thank you and take care uh, and, and let us meet to the next discussion